special counter strain. The reason I'm so fired up about this is because it is the number one thing that I have done for my high cranial pressure other than a med and other than completely change my diet. Did I say hands down? I should have said hands on because fascial counter strain is a hands on therapy sort of like massage, but not. Nah. When I keep up with my fascial counter strain appointments, I very rarely go into high cranial pressure anymore. Now, if you remember, I am diagnosed with IIH, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. It just means that my cranial pressure goes too high. This video is long awaited because I had to make like four other videos as precursors to this video so that this therapy would make any sense because what's going on in my head is so freaking complicated. But that's what my brain pressure does, it seems. I feel like somebody came into the room and it's like waiting me out. Hello? Okay, I was like, did someone come in here? Okay, what was I talking about? You've had to make like five videos to get here, so it's long waited. Oh, thank you. Yeah, okay, I have the list of videos up here on my whiteboard. I had to tell you guys about POTS and CSF leaks and how similar they are. We went over my MRI findings that showed that I had that pachymeningeal enhancement. So there's like that fluid in my brain area. Then we talked about the Baiten test, Baiten test, Baiten score. I'm hypermobile, which makes me susceptible to all this stuff. Then I told you about the Nuka guy who discovered that my C2 is twisted, right? Okay, so that is where we left off. And now, fascial counter spray. Sprain. Fascial counter strain ties it all together and she has actually replaced my Nuka chiropractor. I'm so excited. Fascial counter strain may or may not be related to myofunctional therapy, myofascial therapy, if that even exists. Myofascial release, which I'm pretty sure does exist, and craniosacral therapy, which might be any or multiple of those, but only on your brain? Question mark? I don't know. I don't know the difference. I'm not an expert. This is not medical advice. All I know is that I go to fascial counter strain therapy and it's made a huge difference for my high cranial pressure. What exactly is fascial counter strain? It is a hands-on therapeutic technique, very similar to massage, and it's done at kind of a massage place, not done at a hospital, at least for me. I'm gonna read this to ya. Every organ, nerve, artery, muscle, ligament, tendon, vein, and lymphatic vessel in the human body can actively spasm and produce pain in a natural protective response to injury. Let's say I get in a car accident, I hurt my neck. My neck is going to lock up those muscles, right? And I guess the point is the fascia too right? My muscles, my fascia, I don't know, tell me what else is going to lock up. You know, you get an injury, it tenses in order to protect that injury. That's good. It's protective. It's healthy. It's natural. But like many things, when it becomes chronic, you have a problem. In my case, my practitioner and I believe that my neck tension was holding that C2 over. We believe that it was keeping my neck kink in a certain way, and not allowing that brain pressure to drain. Because of that twisted vertebrae, my body was chronically in a state of needing to be locked. And no matter how many times my Nuka chiropractor pushed that vertebrae back into place, my body kept pushing it back and locking it there. Which led us to wonder what the heck is making my body want to push that thing over in the first place. And we do have an answer, hang tight. Fascial counter strain? I had never even heard of it until maybe a couple of years ago. Have you heard of it? Have you had it? let me know below. How I heard of it was my husband, yet again. My husband was having really bad sleep problems for many years. He tried all sorts of therapies. He was doing massage, acupuncture, chiropractor, of course, cupping. He went to physical therapy, obviously the general doctor and her recommendations, nothing was working. And then he found this lady, the fascial counter strain, and he thought he should give it a go. It helped him a lot. But also, he said it was unlike anything he had ever experienced. And so with my head and my health and the way I'm such a mystery, he was like, hey, Jen, you should probably just go check. See if it helps. See if it happens to help. Thank God. I will never forget before my first appointment with the fascial counter strain specialist. My husband warned me that as she did her work, it sort of felt like nothing was happening. He was like, look, Jen, it's gonna be super weird. She is so gentle, it feels like nothing is happening. The stuff that she does is so bizarre, you're like, why am I paying so much money for this? But then afterwards, you totally feel it. You're a little bit wrecked, 
For me, I'm usually a lot of bit wrecked. There is stuff that is definitely happening. For someone who's normal like my husband, he didn't feel it in the moment. He just noticed that improved sleep. For me though, with all of my stuff, I felt stuff immediately. I feel stuff during every treatment. What a session is like for me. So the vibe is really chill. Like I said, it's pretty much a masseuse area. I walk in, it's like spa music, candles. It smells only mildly, like essential oils and stuff. They let me into the room and it is a massage bed. It has the pillow thing with the hole if you need it. I always start on my back, but you get undressed everything but your underwear. And I like to keep my socks on because I get hot flashes and it just helps me stay warmer and more comfortable. She steps out, lets me get undressed and I get ready on the table. It's just like a massage. I personally really enjoy avoiding the hospital. I really love that these treatments are in such a relaxed environment. Also similar to a massage, the treatments for me last about one to two hours. I always start my treatments on my back. What she does is she maps on my head. She works her way down. And when she finds a point of interest, what she said is sort of a bump, she, from her training or from her tablet, she has her textbook available to her during these treatments. She finds where that point connects to on the body and she basically touches those two points gently for like 10 to 30 seconds until I relax and then she lets go again. Sometimes she has to contort my body in a certain way like she'll move my arm like this and then she'll touch right there and I'm like the heck? She's like touching on my head and touching right there or she'll like touch on my forearm while she's touching behind my ear. And my arm is like that. And I'm like, this is really weird. Like my husband warned me. But it's super effective because it's allowing your body to release itself in areas where it didn't want to release. So what exactly is she doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What I do know is shortening. In traditional massage, the point is to push and stretch and make things long and try to get things to relax that way. This has the opposite effect. In this, what we do is shorten it so that your body realizes, oh, I didn't need that to be so tense. And then the rest of the body relaxes and then that piece is able to relax. My therapist spends a good amount of time on my head because I'm there specifically to deal with the high cranial pressure. There is acidic fluid in my head. I think it's inside the skull, but outside the brain. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't like being there and it feels very acidic. And when this doctor comes and pushes points and stuff on my head, I can feel that fluid moving downward, moving down the back, and it eventually goes and kind of disappears in my neck. It stops hurting once it gets to my neck. And that just blows my mind because that was happening before we even knew about the C2 thing. Hang with me. If you're multitasking, come back. You ready? I think that when she's doing that, she's releasing my packy meningeal enhancements back down into my neck. And I think that's why my brain doesn't feel so high pressure anymore is because all that fluid is out. I don't know how she tells what is what, but she tells me a lot that I have limp problems, which I think that fluid might be limp. I'm not sure. Could be CSF. Could be limp. Could be plasma. Could be some else. I don't know. Nobody knows. So I can feel that fluid going. I feel like it truly does drop my cranial pressure. It literally makes me more mentally sharp for weeks. As of right now, I actually haven't been in a month. So I'm actually having a lot of high head pain. I'm having like acid pain on the right side again. It's always how this happens for me, but the fascial counter strain lady is able to drain that out. I feel like keeping that brain pressure lower keeps me sharper. The problem with that is that I also become more potsy when this happens. Like I'm more mentally sharp because I'm not in high pressure. That tends to give me brain fog. The low pressure is even worse because I become so potsy. That was the first video in the five video. The POTS and CSF leaks are very common in symptoms. When I don't have that high cranial pressure, I notice those low symptoms a lot more. I'm in that low pressure a lot more. That comes with its own challenges and its own brain fog and its own pain. 
I want to tell you guys about some more of the weird things that happened during the sessions for me because it's not just that brain drain. First off, there was a time that she pushed on my forehead, somewhere on my forehead, I forget, and I started crying. And I was so embarrassed. I think it was like the first or second time I ever went. And I was like, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm crying right now. What? And she goes, oh yeah, that's a very emotional spot for a lot of people. Just totally dead straight face. I was like, are you joking? But that's never happened again. And she does push on my forehead every time. So something about that very first time, like that was an emotional release. That was a surprise. She does some work on my hips and my low back because I just had two babies in a row. So she's helping a lot with some of that low back pain and hip pain that I'm still having from childbirth pregnancy. I mentioned already that I like to keep my socks on and that's because I break sweats. My body starts to kind of detox. She's moving my fluids around. She's moving my lymph. She's getting stuff going. So my body starts sweating. I'll get sweats on my hands and feet. So I like to keep my socks on and embarrassingly, sometimes also in my armpits. So we'll get like a puddle under me, not like crazy, but like, you know, there's like little sweat spots under, or sometimes it'll be a little bit stinky cause it's detoxing and like, she's a friend at this point. It's not that bad. Your body is doing natural things. It's good for you to detox, but it's not always pretty. Just trying to warn you. As you probably guessed, I am absolutely wrecked after usually I will typically have a migraine that night, but I typically have a migraine every night, so. But the migraine will start pretty shortly after the therapy, which, duh. Something changed about my environment, so I have to have a migraine about it. Migrainers get me. So let's connect this back to my neck. So here is the actual timeline. I went back to the fascial counter strain lady with the information that it was my C2 that was twisting over into the way and blocking that CSF fluid from draining down. And with that information, she was able to do some digging on the left side of my neck to find why that vertebrae was tending to slip over to the right. And it was because there's a nerve on this side of my neck that tends to pinch. That's it. She said that what happens with people who have a nerve that tends to pinch is they will tilt their head just a little bit and that encourages the vertebrae over. I am slightly tilting my head just a little bit all the time. Maybe it's a little over here, maybe it's over there. Point is, I'm not holding my head aligned because when I do, and I feel it when I do, there's a pinch, there's a pull here. So my body's chronic protection mechanism has been to hold my neck in such a way that that vertebrae is getting pushed over to the side. How unfortunate. And that's blocking all of that flow from getting out of my brain. So fascial counter strain lady, she shortens that nerve, the nerve lets go, the vertebrae twists over, and I get an insane bout of vertigo. I just spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and I tell her to get her hands off of me while I deal with this, because this is a lot right now. Hold on one second. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. And then I'm like, I'm back. And then I come back and do it again in a few weeks. I want to talk about Nuka because I really loved going to Nuka. I'm very thankful for that therapy. At the time, I really needed it. It was proof of concept. He did all the x-rays that found the vertebrae that was out of line. And he was the one who found out that if we move it back, then a lot of my symptoms do resolve a bit. But like everything else, I just wasn't so into that Band-Aid thing. That Band-Aid, what am I trying to say? The migraine thing is starting to come in. The word finding is always one of the very first symptoms. And yawning. Incessant yawning. Does anybody else yawn in their aura phase? Super weird. Moving on. Benefits. What I have listed is all of that. My head my heart, the POTS symptoms, which I know is a little bit contradictory with what I said earlier, where I'm a little bit more potsy when I'm low, but like, hear me out. The POTS in general is easier to manage. I understand it sounds like a contradiction, it's not. It's, it's complicated. My extremities, I get better use of my extremities. I get better use of my eyes and ears. Literally everything is improved when I go to this therapy because of my high cranial pressure. In addition to the stuff for my head, she also does some work on my vagus nerve. I learned about vagus nerve dysfunction during my time at POTS Care with Dr. Driscoll, which I've talked about extensively on my channel. Please poke around. I will link some of those videos below too. 
But the vagus nerve spots that my fascial counter strain lady works on are down the sternum here. Not much to say about that, other than it was kind of weird when she was doing that. My gut started rumbling. I started getting like in my belly, which is kind of cool, right? Because your vagus nerve and digestion. Guys, this is so cool, right? Just an update on my leak evaluation, guys. My full spine MRI is complete. We had some hiccups with getting it done, with getting it done correctly, I should say. It got done no problem. It just got done with problem. But my doctor now has all of the information that he needs. He's gonna go talk to some of the other top leak specialists in the area in about a month. Oh, sorry, not in the area, in the country in about a month. They're gonna get together and they talk about different cases. And so he's gonna talk about my case when they're all talking about their cases together. I'm freaking honored. And they're going to decide together what they think he should proceed with me with. Proceed with for me. So I'm really excited. He has all the information that he needs, but it's gonna be a group decision about how to proceed because this is like a really rare disease and stuff. So that's my quick health update. I should give you guys an MRI story sometime soon too. Yes, that's it. Wow. When I'm migraine done, especially, I'm so bad at signing off these videos. See you later. See you later. Mm -hmm.